My name is Scott Millward. I was diagnosed with a benign thyroid tumor. And I noticed right away the next day when I got up to take a walk around the neighborhood, it was like I hadn't been able to breathe for nine years. I didn't know it. It was a part of a routine checkup uh, that I got as an executive at an insurance company. And uh, the doctor uh, did an ultrasound as a part of that checkup, discovered that I had a growth and recommended that I, that I get it checked out. Uh, it was a little nerve wracking to know that you have something growing inside of you. And so I was pretty keen to get it checked out. Uh, scheduled the biopsy quickly thereafter. The biopsy came back inconclusive. I had to go get a second one that was also inconclusive. And the doctor really gave me a few options. He said, you can monitor it and continue to see what happens. You can get your thyroid removed <laughs> or, uh, you know, I guess there was probably some third option in between, but I, I didn't hear that. Um, so I decided to, to monitor it. I was not anxious to have anything taken out of my body proactively if I could help it. And there were no symptoms. It was uh, something that was growing on the inside that I couldn't see. As far as I could tell, it didn't impact me. I was able to breathe normally. I wasn't fatigued or anything like that, so I let it go. So several years went by and uh, in 2019, uh, I'd, I'd been monitoring it for about five years. Uh, and in 2019, my dad was diagnosed with cancer, a completely different type of cancer, MDS, a blood cancer. But it made me think that this is pretty serious business. I should go back and get it checked out again. So I was referred to um, a specialist uh, at USC Keck, uh, went in and spoke with the specialist. It was actually the day I was going up to be with my dad for his diagnosis. And so I figured I'd share mine at the same time he shared his, and hopefully we both get good news. Um, the doctor uh, at the time recommended a, a very similar approach, but she was a little more aggressive about the need to remove the, the thyroid. You know, at that time it had grown quite a bit and it was to the point where there was still the ability to take out part of the thyroid as opposed to the entire thing. But she said that that window was likely closing and so I had to make a decision. I asked her what other treatments were available and she said, really, this is it. This is, this is really all we've got at this time. Um, there's some experimental things, but, but nothing else that you can do. So I, uh, I took that news uh, with me. Unfortunately, my dad's diagnosis was much worse and that did not uh, have, a ha have a happy ending. And it made me really think I, I've got to you know, be proactive about my healthcare. So I started doing research on the different treatments that were available. And I discovered that ablation was being done, just not frequently in the US. And I called my insurance company and uh, they were aware of it, but not willing to cover it. Uh, and so I continued to monitor and monitor. And uh, finally, uh, after the pandemic hit and uh, I had time to sit at home and do nothing but research, I decided I was going to, to do something about this. I realized that symptoms were starting to occur. I was starting to, to feel a little bit tired. I, had, I didn't have the stamina when I was working out. And I decided that one way or another, I had to get this resolved. Uh, it was starting to protrude out of my neck and you could see it. I was about the size of a golf ball. It was pretty good sized and it was causing some discomfort and, and more to the point, I think mentally, I was tired. I was tired of fighting it. I was nervous that it was gonna turn into something that was gonna be worse. Um, I lost my dad at the beginning of 2020 and that made me reevaluate what was the most important thing. And, and so I set about trying to, uh, to figure out if I had one last go to get this thing treated. I went into my uh, my, my general practitioner at the time who referred me to a specialist. This guy said, look, you know, what would I do if I were you? I, I don't know, uh, but here are your options. You know, this, this treatment is just about ready to get approved. Uh, your insurance may or may not cover it, but at least it's not taking something out of your body. So maybe you should check it out. I, I decided that I was gonna find a place that was gonna do it, whether it was gonna be here. And so I started doing research and discovered that there were a couple of places here locally that had actually begun doing ablation. And uh, there was a chance that my insurance would cover it, that I could get it done here locally, but it was still new and really relatively untested. And so uh, the first place I went was, was UCLA. I had a, I had a tie there, uh, but ultimately um, the, the process to get in and get registered as a patient and get an appointment was really, really cumbersome and self-directed. And and I had a tough time navigating through that. 
Uh, at the same time, I was also um, uh, doing research on Dr. Goldfarb at St. John's and her resume was so incredibly impressive and I was already in the, the Providence system and so it was much easier to get an appointment. After I met her, uh, she's fantastic. She really made me feel at ease. She was very honest with me. She told me she had not done this on a male patient before, uh, but that uh, she would love for me to be her first one. And I felt so confident um, with her skill and the way that she asked me great questions and then also educated me on the things that I didn't know. Uh, it felt like it was a team effort. And so I, I chose to go with Dr. Goldfarb and uh, Boy, what a good decision that wound up being. <laughs> Not only was she excellent in all of the pre-op stuff leading up to it, answering my questions and, and moving quickly and prioritizing things, uh, but in the procedure itself, uh, she was very clear about what was happening. I was awake the entire time. Uh, there was mild discomfort, uh, but I wouldn't say that it was pain per se, but certainly I could feel that there was some stuff uh, you know, happening. I think uh, for anybody that's never done it before, maybe the most shocking thing is actually the sound. Uh, it's sort of a zapping sound that really gets your attention if you've never heard it before. Uh, and there's a little bit of a, a smell that comes with the, uh, the, the burn, um, but it, it didn't bother me in the slightest. I, I think all in, I was probably here for a couple of hours and did not need anything other than local anesthesia to get it done. For me, as a, a learning professional, one of the really interesting things was uh, Dr. Goldfarb was certainly there doing the procedure, but there was also somebody there from the medical device company that was helping to advise and the nurse who was in the room. So it, again, really felt like a team effort, like they were working together and constantly asking me how I was feeling and how I was doing. The recovery was, was very straightforward. I had uh, ice on my neck for uh, maybe 24 hours, uh, I had a, uh, a collar that had ice in it, and there was a little bit of discoloring and some, some swelling, but uh, that dissipated really, really quickly. Um, I think the thing that was so amazing that you don't realize over the span of nine years how much this thing has grown and, and put pressure on things like your esophagus and you know your ability to breathe. And I noticed right away the next day when I got up to take a walk around the neighborhood, it was like I hadn't been able to breathe for nine years. I didn't know it. Uh, immediately, my, my heart felt stronger. Uh, it was easier to breathe. I felt like I could think clearer. I was getting more oxygen. Not long after the procedure, when I was able to start moving around again, I started uh, working out and I was just pacing better than I ever had. I, mean, I literally was in better shape almost overnight. And so just that relief alone was, was an incredible success. And then, you know, ultimately, as it as it continued on over the months, I, I assumed it was getting better, and I couldn't see it anymore at some point. And so I had my follow up appointment with Dr. Goldfarb, and uh, her eyes lit up when she did the measurement, and she said, "Are you ready for this?" And I said, "Yeah, I'm ready. You know, it's going to be what it's going to be." She said, "Well, remember, I told you that at the seven or eight month mark, it could shrink as much as 50 to 60 percent." She said, "Yours is at 93 percent. It's almost gone." And so, uh, yeah, I, I was blown away by that. It far exceeded my expectations. You know, I, I hope that it never ever comes back, but if it does, I'm not gonna be as scared by it uh, or frankly by anything else that happens to me medically moving forward, just because I feel like there's solutions out there. And, you know, if you're patient and if you do your research and if you advocate for yourself, that ultimately you're gonna get treatment that'll work for you. <laughs> So Dr. Goldfarb, I just want to tell you thank you for being my teammate, for being um, so professional and consultative with me and treating me more like a human being than an experiment. I appreciated every minute that we got to spend together. Your optimism and enthusiasm uh, made me feel comfortable in a time of, of significant stress for me. And uh, what can I say, your work is pretty good and I'm living proof.